All right, you guys. So here we go. We're going to go over just the basics of transformations. I have separate videos that more thoroughly walk through each of these, but this is just an overview of um, the four most common transformations, okay? Uh, first, there's some vocabulary. Basically, we have two types of transformations. We have rigid and we have non-rigid. So rigid means we kept the same actual figure. We didn't change it at all. We didn't change its size, its shape. We just moved it to another spot. We spun it around, but it is the same original object. Whereas non-rigid means, ah, maybe we bent it in half, maybe we shrunk it down, maybe it's an entirely new shape, nothing to do with the first one, because we bent it so out of shape and changed it its size and shape. So those are two different words. Um, also, isometry is the same as um, a rigid transformation. It means everything about the original is the same measurement in the end. So every angle stayed the same, every length stayed the same, so same size, same shape. Okay, so either rigid or isometry. Another one is um, either pre-image. Sometimes the book will refer to this as the original. And then there'll be the image or the after image, right? So we start with some original shape like ABC. Okay, there's a triangle. That's the pre-image. We do some transformation. Waka, 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 waka. And there we go. In the end, what we do is so that we know which point went where, we do these little apostrophes. Like we have A apostrophe. B apostrophe, C apostrophe. This tells me this used to be point A in space, and now it's at this new one, but it's still a relation to A, right? That point traveled through space and time to land in this new location, and that just tells you, oh, look, it looks like the shape got rotated, right? It kind of got um, turned on its edge, right? Now B is spun around a little bit more, so this looks to me like a rotation. Uh, and that's as we go through, we'll kind of investigate these. All right, so that's it for the beginning vocab. Well, there's basically four transformations. The easiest one is translation. This means to just move it through space, right? So we kept the original shape. We didn't turn it. We didn't change its size. We just slid it. It's still facing in exactly the same direction. It just moved through space. This is the easiest one. Um, we have two different notations for it. We either use vectors where this says how much the X changed and this says how much the Y changed. Uh, this is like an arrowhead. So in the picture, this is literally just a drawn vector. So see how it says by, um, translate the figure by this translation vector. It's literally visually without numbers or words showing you that's what you do with each point. OK, so I'm going to erase that. So that means this point that started here slides over to here. We do the exact same arrow up top. So this point slides one, two, three to the right and lands here. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and erase that arrow there. All right, and then we know that this curve, it was a radius two circle that swung around. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. We have a circle that swings like this and then a straight line. So there's our new shape slid three spaces to the right. We call that a translation. So we could write that as we translated it by a vector three zero. We use these pointy brackets to say it's a vector. Or you could use mapping. And what that literally does is it says what happens to each individual point with math, with algebra, with arithmetic. So this says we start with some point x, y. And then we have this like flat line arrow that says it becomes. And what do we do with each point? So in this one, we took the X number. And since we added three positive, we go, we whatever number we started with is now X plus three, right? So if we started with the point one comma four, it would now become one plus three. So this would become four. And we didn't change the Y value. It didn't move up and down. So in the end, the Y stays the same. So the point one four would move to point four four. So that's how you would do it with mapping. So two different notations that mean the exact same thing. It's just two different ways to write it. Okay, so let's just do two examples. All right, so um, here's number nine. Oh, we actually did one example, sorry. So here's just one more. So translate three left and two up. So as a vector, that would be three left and two up. What, why use the wrong, that's a pointy bracket. Or in mapping notation, that would say take every point and subtract three from the X and whoops, I wrote an X and add two to the Y. So either notation you use, we're going to take P and we're going to go one, 
two, three, and then we're going to go one, two. Okay, so we're going to end up right here, and then I'm going to label that as P prime. All right, and then we're going to take Q, and we're going to go one, two, three back, and two up, and we end here, and that's going to become Q prime. And then R, we go one, two, three left, one, two up, and this is R prime. And then we connect them. So we had our original or our pre-image, and now we have our image of that. See, notice that it's facing exactly the same direction. It didn't rotate. It didn't flip over. That's a translation. Every single thing moved by the same directional arrow. All right. Now, the next one is a reflection. Uh, this one is like kind of like looking in a mirror. It's when you take a shape and you swing it over the line. It's as though you put a pole through the picture and then you just spun the sign around. Right. So whatever the sign said, you turn it around in 3D space and lay it back down on the plane. And now it looks like it's mirror image. So one thing I mentioned here, um, another I like I, I always think about it like this in my head. It's like flipping a playing card over. One difference of this from all the others is that it changes the orientation of the shape in a way that no other. So no matter how many rotations you do or how many translations, you can never take a face up playing card and turn it into a face down playing card, except by flipping it over, right? No matter how much you rotate it on the space, you turn it around, turn it around in 2D space, it's still face up or still face down. And no matter how much you slide it around, it's still the same face up or the same face down. The only way to flip it over is with a reflection. And what that does is it changes the order of the points. And so here the ABC was counterclockwise. And now when you flip it over, ABC is now counterclockwise. So it kind of takes a left hand. And when you flip it over, it becomes a right hand. And so that's unique to reflections. Now how you do it, what you do is you say, okay, here's my um, orange line of symmetry down the middle. If I want to know how I actually move something over this, oh, I didn't do a perfect job on that. Um, what I do is I go, okay, I take the point I want to reflect. I go straight at the line of symmetry perpendicular to it. And then I do the same distance sticking out the other side, again, perpendicular to it. And that's how you get your image point. You do that for each point, And the result of that is you flipping this entire shape over this mirror or Really, you can think about it like rotating in 3D space. Okay, so let's do a couple. Here's, we're only going to start as a beginner level in vertical and horizontal. However, later on, we can rotate around anything. Okay, so to start, uh, I'm going to do this shape. I'm going to do it in orange because orange is beautiful. So I'm going to go one at the line perpendicular, one over. Same thing on top. The, it was two away, so this becomes two away. Um, this one was two away and four away. So I'm going to go two and four and I get a point here and a point here. So I'm going to erase all those like tracer lines I used for my own help. All right. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the bottom two. So I went one away on the left. So one on the right. And then this one was one, two, three. So one, two, three. And now I just connect them all straight lines because they're laser perfect. I mean, this is the best sketch ever. <laughs> um, and then you could shade it in. So that's going to be our reflection over that line. If they had names like ABC, we would label them A prime, B prime, and so on. But since it's unlabeled, we'll leave the image unlabeled. Over here, though, it's labeled. So sketch across the X axis. So that's reflect, not sketch. Um, so here's the X axis. So if we reflect it over, this is on the line that we're reflecting over. In other words, it's zero away on the top. So when we reflect it over, it's zero away on the bottom. So it just stays in place. Another way is it's on the pole. So when you spin the pole around, it doesn't actually move. It's just on the pole. The only one that changes is one, two, three up. You go perpendicular at the line and now it's three down. One, two, three, and it ends up right here. That's R prime. So Q and P, their image points actually land on the exact same place. So you could label that as P prime and Q prime and put points right over the top of them. They're the same location in space. So that's just two different names for the same location in space. There's no ambiguity there. If I say P prime, you know where P prime is. If I know, if I say P, you know where P is. It's okay that we have 
two different words for the same thing. I mean, we did that at the very beginning of the notes. We said we have, um, oh, my iPad's going so slow. We have the word isometry and the word rigid. There's no ambiguity. They both mean the same thing. So if I say isometry, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If I say rigid, you know what I'm talking about. Um, whereas the other way, if isometry meant two different things, ooh, that's when we get into the vagaries and we don't like that. Okay, so here we go. The third one is rotation. So this is um, really natural. You just put an object flat on the table and you spin it around. Now there's two things you need though. You need to know what point are you spinning it around and what angle are you spinning it by? Because um, most often you're probably used to taking a shape and spinning it around a point in the center. Um, however, in this example, see how the point is outside and so the entire shape swings in an arc. The outside points are still on the outside. The inside points are still on the inside. Uh, but what that does is now I'm spinning it through space, but because I can have a point way outside, I can also have it travel long distances through space as I rotate. In general, um, we're only going to do 90s and 180s at this beginner level right now. So if we're rotating 180 degrees, that's easy because what you do is you just say, I'm starting at this um, center point P. And what I do is I just say, how did I get to that point I was going to? And then that set of instructions, I just rotate that set of instructions 180 degrees. So now, boom, that's how I got to my point. So there's my first point. So I'm going to go ahead and erase that scratch work. Okay, now it gets a little more complicated, though, because how did I get from P to this point. So the way I think about it is I put a little robot down and my robot drives forward three. It makes a right turn. So that's a right turn. And then it drives one. So if I want to spin that 180 degrees, I take that robot that's already got those sets of instructions and I just spin them around and say, hey, you know what? From now on, I want your starting direction instead of up. I want it to be 180 degree different. I want you to start down. So think about it now. I just set the robot down and he goes one, two, three, he makes a right turn. This is a right turn for him. Okay. And then he goes one space and there's his new point. Okay. So any set of directions, if you just rotate the starting direction by 90 degrees, then the end point gets swung around 90 degrees too. All right. So let's do another one. Let's do this one in, I don't know, green. Okay. So again, I'm going to say, uh, to get to the next point, I went up to I did a right turn, so two, right, and then one. And I started by going up. So let's just spin that starting direction 180 degrees. Now I'm going to start facing down. So I'm going to do the same directions down. I'm going to go one, two, right turn for my robot, one. And there's my next point. Okay. And now I'm going to erase all that. And I'm going to color code the uh, thing up here so I know which is which. So this was my green. This was my pink. This was my orange. Okay, now let's do uh, blue. Okay, so I'm gonna do uh, this one, which is two, right turn two. And I started by going up. So now I'm gonna start by going down and I'm gonna go down one, two, right turn one, two. And here's my next point. All right, so again, I'm gonna erase all my little sketch work there. And I could keep with the same start by going up, but I'm going to start in a different direction now. So now let's do purple. And now I'm going to say, actually, I just went to the right two. Well, that's an easy one. So 180 degrees is just go this way. Two. Okay. Whoops. I was about to write a two. That's silly. Okay. So let's erase all that. All right. We got one last point. Okay. So let's go red. So this is the red point. So I'm going to say we go starting to go into the right one two three four this time it's a left turn one so now instead of starting to the right i want to spin 180 degrees so i'm going to just start going left i'm follow the same instructions so i want one two three four and then it was a left turn so as my robot drives this is a left turn and then i want to go one so it ends up right there and now all i need to do is connect all of my points. I'm just going to erase my, oh, my poor red dot disappeared. Well, I'll go put it back. All right, it was right here. Four, left turn one. All right, so now I just need to connect it. So I'll take black. That was a little complicated, I know, 
So I'm going to go, oh, shoot, I switched my points, and I could tell right now I switched my points. Nobody caught me and told me it was, uh, this was pink, and this was green. I color-coded them wrong in the end. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and connect to these. So the orange goes up to the green, which was the furthest away. Then it goes to the blue. Then it goes out to the red, which is that furthest one out there. And then it comes back to the purple, right? Then it comes back to the pink, goes in zoop, like that. And then pink connects to orange. So there's the same shape spun around 180 degrees. I know that's the hardest one for kids. Um, let's do it again. This one. So this one's rotate 90 degrees clockwise. So clockwise is like the clock spins is this way. 90 degrees. Now some of you can just naturally in your head be like, oh yeah, this is the center point. It's saying about to so the origin, zero, zero. So we just swing this sucker 90 degrees. Q ends up one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then this one's right here. And bam, I can just intuitively, I can see that's a 90 degree swing. Others, you need a strategy, and that's okay, because at some point, the more complex things get, everybody needs a strategy, and the more you can develop that, the better, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, take our plan. So the center one was at the center, so we don't need to do that one. We can just relabel this to be um, P prime. Now the next one, Q, I go, okay, let's do it in uh, pink. Say, well, all we did was go one, two, three, four, and then I just swing the starting direction 90 degrees clockwise. And now I go one, two, three, four. And so I end up at this point. Okay, so that's my Q prime. And I get my eraser and I erase my scratch work. I leave my point there. All right, and then for the next one, let's do it in uh, green. So I'm going to start by going right, but you could have chose anything. So that's four right. And then it's a left turn. And then it's three. Okay, so four left turn three. All I'm gonna do is take the starting direction that was to the right, and I'm gonna swing that starting direction 90 degrees. Okay, so now I go, same instructions, so pointing in this direction now, I go one, two, three, four. My robot makes a left turn. This is my robot's left turn right there. And then he goes three, one, two, three. Okay, so we just take that four left turn three, and we just swing that little L from this way to now it's like this. And now I've swung that point 90 degrees. Okay, so I've got my point. I label that R prime. Let's erase the scratch work here, clean up our diagram, and then we'll just draw it with uh, maybe a black pen here. So connecting the P prime to R prime, R prime to Q prime, and back up. There's our 90 degree rotation. All right, and the last one isn't in this section, but it comes up, so dilation. So this is just zooming and zooming out, right? This is just literally put two fingers on your screen and zoom in, zoom out. That's what dilation, sorry if I just made you dizzy. <laughs> um, so dilation simply means, or, or another way to think about it, I like is like, think about this as like a, um, a little flashlight and you shine the flashlight and you press that button. I mean, gosh, can you remember being a kid and using a flashlight? I mean, there was no greater thing in the world I mean, I don't know, maybe for you guys, you're younger, maybe you had an iPad. But for me, I mean, a flashlight, the power goes out, and you're shining it at something, making shadow puppets. And so if you shine this light on this small thing, it casts a large shadow on the wall that is, okay, it's a little fuzzy, but it's the exact same shape. So that's what a dilation is, except you can zoom back in and have it be smaller, or it can get larger, larger, larger. Okay, so you need a center that you're dilating about, that's the like light, and then you need a scale factor. Are we getting bigger or smaller by how much, okay? So dilate by a scale factor of three about the origin. So most dilations we do are about the origin and it's the easiest thing because the point X, Y literally just gets multiplied by the scale factor. So it becomes three X, three Y in this one. So in, in simple terms, by counting, what we're doing is, oh, I don't want to do that color. Uh, we're saying, if I went over two and up two, I'm just going to do three of those because I want it to be three times as far away. So over two, two, that's two. Over two, two, that's three journeys. So that's where my new point is. Okay, that's one way to do it. So this would be G prime. We could just count and go, it's however far I already went, except now it's three of those journeys. 
Or another way to do it is to say, take this point, this was two comma two, and then make it two times three is six, and two times three is six. So now our new point, oh, I erased it, is right here, and that's at six comma six, because it's three times as far away from the origin, but in the same direction, right? So whatever direction um, from the center hits that first point, it should absolutely go exactly to the next. So just like a flashlight, the beam, the light travels in a straight line. So wherever it hits G, it'll hit G prime. G prime will just be further away. So same thing with F. I know F prime is just going to be three times as far away this way. Okay. And then same thing from the center to H, it's just going to be three times as far away this way. Okay. So I'm going to erase those two lines and I'm going to say, uh, let's do the multiplication for F and the journey for H. Okay. So for F, we have the point two comma negative two. If we multiply both by three, we get six comma negative six. So our new point is right here. This is F prime. Okay. I'm going to erase my scratch work there. I'm going to erase this uh, line there. All right. And then my last one, I'm going to say, well, I went down two over one. I just want to do that journey three times. That would be three times as far from the origin. So um, I'm going to go two, one. That's twice. And then I'm going to go two, one. That's three times. So there is my new H prime. I'm going to erase my scratch work there. All right. And now I don't connect to the center. I just connect to three points. So here is my new shape that is three times as large. But notice I could have oriented it um, from a different center because three times as large, this shape that I drew could be anywhere. Depending on where that flashlight center was, this shadow could be anywhere. But the fact that it's right here, and if I wanted to say like, say I had a different problem, it was like find the center of dilation. All you do is connect H to H prime forever. And then you just connect F to F prime forever. And you go, oh, I already know where the center is. But let's double check it. Connect G to G prime. And the only place where all these line up is the center of dilation. And it's that center. Okay. I don't go into overkill showing you too many things. There we go. All right. So let's just do some problems. Um, see whether these transformations are rigid or non-rigid. Um, so this one, if you look at everything about it, the same length is still there. This is still like two boxes. The order, you have this like circle duck thing is the eye. Here's the bill. You have the duck eye with the bill. Yeah, so this is a rotation, but it's the same shape with the same measures. This is rigid. And we know because um, rotation is a rigid transformation. That's one way. Uh, or you could just say it's the same size and same shape, right? It just looks like same size and same shape. Okay, and then the next one, you go, ooh, that I can tell right away. That's non-rigid because it's not the same shape. It's literally a different shape. The rope got changed, right? And number three is non-rigid. That's an easy one because not the same size, right? So rigid transformation simply means it's exactly the same figure. Like my physical water bottle sitting on my um, desk right now, I can put it on the other side of my desk. I can rotate it and lay it on its side. I can, I don't know what reflect would do. Maybe I reflected through the desk and now it's upside down on the bottom of the desk, but it's still the same physical water bottle. I, it didn't get bigger or smaller or dented. <laughs> it's actually got a lot of dents, but you know, it didn't actually change in shape or size. That's non-rigid. All right, so let's do a couple more. So translate one unit left and two down. So again, that's negative one and negative four as a vector or on the bottom you take x y and one left means you subtract one from x and four down means subtract four from y so that's going to be back left one and down one two three four here's p prime and then q is back one down one two three four and if it doesn't look like the same shape and then you miscounted one one two three four and so here's R prime. So there's our translation of one left and, oh, whoops, one left and four down. 
Okay, the next one reflect across the y-axis. Now notice that this one has stuff on both sides. That's totally okay. So I'll do this one in orange. So to reflect, I go straight at the y-axis and then that same distance to the other side. Oh, that's, let me do that without. Okay, so I'm going to go right there. That's r prime. And in q, same thing. I go straight at the axis, straight out the other side. So here's my q prime. And then p, I count it's 1, 2, 3 from the axis. So 1, 2, 3 on the other side. Here's p prime. And I'm just going to clean this up, get rid of some of this scratch work here. And so since we spun it around the y-axis, it's like sticking a pole straight through our shape and spinning that pole in 3D space. And so this is what it looks like now. Perfect. Okay. Now rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise about the origin. So counterclockwise is this way, 90 degrees. So um, some of these are easier than others. Like P, we just were pointed down. And so if we were pointed down one and we spin that 90, well now we just spin it this way 90. I'm gonna make my pen a little uh, skinnier. Then it's just pointed this way 90. So here's our new P. Um, I'm gonna put the P down here. I think we'll be safe. So that's P prime. Okay, I'm gonna erase my scratch work. And let's go to the next point. Let's do it in uh, blue. So Q, the journey to get to Q for me was, I went this way, one, two, three, four. And then I did a, a right turn. And then I went one. So four right, one like this. And I just swing that path. And I use really just the starting direction. And now it looks like this. 4, 1, right? So now I spun that starting direction. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4. Then it's a right turn, 1. So here's my new Q prime. Okay, and I'm going to stick with blue. This is, this is looking good on this image. Okay, now to get to R, maybe I'm going to do it a totally different direction. Maybe I'm going to start by going up to, whoops, I'm on a racer. I'm going to go up to, and then I'm going to go right turn, so two, right turn, four. Okay, so I have a two, four like this, and now I'm just gonna rotate it 90 degrees, and now the two, four is like this, right? Or I just think about it, I just want, instead of starting up, I'm gonna rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise, and I start this way, two. Okay, so two, it's a right turn, and then one, two, three, four. So here's my end point, that is, R prime and then I just connect those so rotations are the hardest uh, just mentally I think they're hard for people to you know keep track of in their head uh, let me get rid of some of the scratch work here clean up this diagram there we go all right so there's our final image rotated 90 degrees about the center again it's about the origin it would be a totally different answer if we rotate about a different point the shape would still actually be the same with the same orientation it would just be in a different spot. It would be that same rotation, but it would be in a totally different location because we rotated it 90 degrees. So the end result was the same, but about a different point in space would mean it would rotate differently and land somewhere else. Okay. Um, so this one, triangle RSE. Oh, let me zoom out so I can see the diagram. Triangle RSE with point O, random point on RS. All right, that's good. So we start with this Diagram on the right with some random point on the segment RS uh, are reflected across line P to get the image, okay? Which of the following statements are true? So is RE congruent to R prime E prime? Yeah. Uh, so this is true, and this is just by its a rigid transformation. So all the lengths are the same, right? Well, my iPad is writing very slow, so length's the same. Let's look at the next one. S and S prime. Oh yeah, so same again. This is rigid transformation and this is the angles are the same. Okay, R, O, S. Oh yeah, so again, rigid transformation. So collinearity, collinearity, yeah, is the same, right? It's literally the same shape, the same. I suggest that them is the same. 
Uh, so all the angles, all the measurements, whatever points connected to which points are still the same. So the distance from S to line P is equal to distance from S prime to P. S to P, oh yeah, that's true. Uh, and that's true. That's because uh, reflection is same distance to the line of symmetry of symmetry, but opposite side, right? That's what that's what you're doing by reflection. It's if it was three away on the right, now it's three away on the left. Okay, let's look at. Triangle ABC with M, midpoint of AC, translated to make this new one. Which of the following statements are true? So are the distances the same? Yes. Are the angles the same? Yes. Is M still the midpoint? Yes, because all the things. So is B, B prime the same as M, M prime? Yeah, because they were translated by the same vector. Right, so that same vector has one length, and so if you move this point by like four in the same direction, and this point by four in the same direction, they still have the same orientation to one another, and you're literally just moving them the same amount. So that distance is four, and that distance is four. Perfect. And so all these are the same as the last problem, 21, and it's all because it's a rigid transformation. Right, now this one says if triangle DEF, with each segment EG um, of the bisector, okay, is rotated to create EDF, okay, then which of the following are true? DF is the same as DF, yes. Um, F is the same as F, yes. Um, DEG is the same as DEG, yeah. Um, and D to G, wait, D to D prime is the same as E to E prime. So that one is the only one that's not true. And the simple reason is if we have a rotation, it's like creating a circle uh, and a point on the inside that you rotate might only travel like five, whereas something that's further away that spins the same angle would actually travel a greater distance, right? It's like a when you hold somebody and swing them, you're in the center, so you're not spinning that fast, but the further they are from you, they're swinging it faster and faster because in the same amount of time, they have to cover a greater distance. So D to D prime, because D was further away than G, um, is very likely longer. Now, who knows? They Because the picture might not be to scale, maybe these were equally distant from the center, but they don't look like it. So yeah, the things closer to the center travel less distance. So that was a fun little trick. Uh, but the others are just simply because it's a rigid transformation um, that these are all preserved. That was a cool one. And then last one, let's do one more dilation. Okay, well, let's do it by a, let's shrink it. So draw a dilation about zero, zero with a scale factor of a half. So again, an easy way to do this is say XY becomes the scale factor of X and scale factor of Y. This only works when we do it around the origin. But yeah, so for now we have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So this was um, four, four. This was six, four. This was six, six. And this was four, eight. And so if we multiply all those by a half, we get two, two is a prime. We get half of C is three, two. That's C prime. We get half of the other one is three, three is D prime. And then B is right here, half of that is two comma four, that's B prime. So notice that all the lengths got cut in half, not just their um, X and Y coordinates. This used to be two wide, four tall, two tall, right? Now it's one, one, and two. So everything is now half the size. And again, if you were like, well, where's the center of this? All you do is connect B to B prime and keep going forever. Connect D to O. Oh. Oh yeah, they're D to D prime forever. You connect C to C prime forever, and they always come back to this one center of rotation. Now we don't need those in our picture, uh, but that's how you would find the center of rotation. All right, I hope you like that video. Just a quick overview of all the transformations.